There's one fact you gotta face every year, and that's winter's on its way. Oh crap. One. Because I know winter's on its way, I started to prep my van today. <laughs> what I ended up doing is making a full total mess. I started digging through some places that I know last year I had some condensation problems. <laughs> and realized today that I've got a lot of long sleeve. There's my winter jacket, which I need. Uh, a long sleeve. A vest I barely wear. Another long sleeve. Another long sleeve. Another long sleeve. I have so many light jackets in the van and only one winter jacket that actually smells pretty damn good for being stuffed in the corner of the van for the last eight months. I picked this one up at Costco. Anyway guys, let's go through and talk about the areas that I had problems with last year. Look at this mess. <laughs> Now I feel a little bit, a little bit better about this vest. I'm just gonna toss this stuff in the front seat for now. Some of these I could probably get rid of. One thing I do keep in the van is a Sub-Zero sleeping bag. I got this one. The links for this are in my Amazon links. Sorry, homie. You wanna come up? Come on. Come on. Up you come. Come on, buddy. You come help? All right. Nobody wants to see your balls. Where is that logo? Yeah, I got this Tetan. Tetan, whatever that is. Anyway, not bad. It was super cheap on Amazon and it's good to like minus 18 degrees Celsius. I always keep this just in case I do get one of those nights that I just can't shake the chill. But for the most part in the winter, I stay good and warm in my bed with my two blankets I do have on it. But keeping one of these is always a good idea because that one day when you do happen to mm, get so cold, you've got it. Last winter, I had a small condensation problem, mainly just on the wheel wells. Um, if you guys remember my videos from around last winter, that's when I didn't have any walls or anything in the van. It was just small portions of insulation covering any of the bare metal. I barely have any insulation in my van, literally like a hundred and some odd dollars worth. Barely anything. So. I'm gonna, before I put this away, I wanna show you what I did on one of the spots that I have a condensation problem. Actually, three spots, but let me show you the one right now. Behind my, I wanna call this a dresser because technically that's what it is, but behind my cabinet here is a nice big wide storage space. And down in this storage space is where I keep things like, <laughs> my blanket, all of my jackets and stuff like that that I don't wear very often, all get stuffed behind here as kind of like storage. Let me grab a light. Actually, we'll grab this one here. Oh, that Velcro is pretty good. <laughs> wow. Ooh, go Amazon Velcro. That's insane. All right. Back here. You'll notice that I have a piece of Reflectix down there, and that was not at all to solve a problem. I just had it, and it kept my clothes and stuff from touching anything like metal or 
dirty. So back here, you'll notice on the, sorry, the lighting is crappy, but that's the fuel door cover. It's not the fuel door cover, the little area where the fuel door is. Well, I have sprayed that with, oh, I'm gonna come back out here. I have sprayed that with rock art, that rubberized rock art stuff that goes underneath your vehicles. I got that idea from Eddie and Monica. If you haven't seen that video, I will try and post it at the end of this one. Um, they had some water issues on the roof and instead of insulating, they just sprayed it with that rubberized rock art. So what I did is on my three problem spots I have for condensation, I ended up just spraying them with a little bit of rock guard. That one wasn't so much of a problem. It was on my wheel wells where I had the biggest problem. I was getting water on the floor. I'm like, where is this water even coming from? Turned out that my wheel wells were freaking soaking wet. Like literally covered in like, it looked like it rained on them. It was so bad. So I had two options or three options. I was gonna box it in with some of that foam insulation, kind of create a box over it, or I was just gonna put a layer of Reflectix on it. Not because Reflectix is gonna help insulate, but because Reflectix would have created a little vapor barrier between inside and the wheel well, keeping the temperatures. Yeah, you guys know how condensation works. Or try what Eddie and Monica said and spray it with that rubberized stuff. Worst case scenario, the rubberized stuff doesn't work on my wheel wells and I gotta cover it in Reflectix, but that's okay because I have an extra piece of Reflectix in the back, no problems. All right, let me put this stuff away. I purchased the can of the rubberized undercoating for $8 from Canadian Tire, obviously clearly here in Canada. And let me show you what the wheel well looks like. It's not pretty, but I'm hoping it's gonna work for the condensation issues I had from last year. So this is the wheel well, obviously the wheel's on the other side, but that is bare sheet metal, meaning that this metal is exposed to the inside and the outside temperatures with no insulation on either side. So think of it as a pop can. When there's temperatures differences on either side, one of the sides is going to get condensation. So by putting the rubberized coating on there, I'm hoping that creates enough of a divide, much like Eddie and Monica did on their roof, and it worked for them. So fingers crossed this works for me. Um, I sprayed it super good. I got right down in all the edges. Uh, what I did is I unscrewed the bed, pulled it all kind of apart, obviously moved the boxes, and uh, pulled it all out and then started just to kind of spray around it. And then I put it back in and I sprayed around it again to make sure it was all super, super good. I plan on painting this black anyway because that's the only piece of bare wood looking in my whole build. And <laughs> it's like boom, two by four. So no big deal. And I did the same thing on obviously the other side, which is hard to see as well. I believe because I've experienced this myself, that anything you do to your van is kind of experimental. Figure out what works for you. Your climate, your area, where you plan on traveling, how long you plan on spending in those temperatures, I guess is all gonna play a major role in what you need to do. When I first moved into my van, it was a bare shell. I had no insulation at all, and I think I lived in the van for probably two, two months, I think, with bare or three months with nothing, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look and I'm not about to dig back that far in my videos. And when I did insulate, I was like, okay, you know, everybody's like, you have to, you have to, you have to. And something in my mind's like, don't tell me what to do. I will figure this out because that's who I am. And if you're just joining us on the channel, welcome by the way. This is what I have for insulation in my entire van. Pretty much what you see on my door is what I got. In all the major cavities in my van, anything that was thick, I have fiberglass insulation just to fill in the gap. 
and then I covered it with like a plastic vapor barrier and then I stuck Reflectix over it, not for any insulation purposes, but because it looked better than looking at plastic and, and insulation like that fiberglass. That's all I did. My entire van is done just like that. So in the van, there is no fiberglass insulation, only in the bottom thick cavities like around the wheel well, because there's like big gaps and openings. I just stuffed it full. That's it. The rest of the van on the top is just like this. All the ribbing pieces I left alone, like I didn't cover any of the ribbing at all. And then I cut this, that's pink foam board, I just painted it black. I trimmed out the pink foam board and covered anything where the window would have been because that section there is actually bare sheet metal. So that bare sheet metal is directly on the inside of that, meaning that it's exposed to the temperature on the outside from the inside where the ribbing, well, you've got that few inch gap. So I left it alone as an experiment. Turns out it worked. Don't get me wrong, I live in Vancouver, Canada. We don't get rough winters. Our winters are pretty freaking easy. But doing that minimal amount of insulation worked. And the reason why I chose to do just that is because, you know, it just made sense to me to cover anything that was bare sheet metal. Because bare sheet metal, like a pop can, is gonna get condensation on it. But, like in Eddie and Monica's video, they kinda did the same thing without using insulation, they used a rubberized coating to create that gap. You know, I thought it was a great idea. It may not be a great idea for everybody, but I will find out myself, because I'm gonna be in the same winter conditions as last year, if that, condens if that spray can stuff, that little rubber coating solves my condensation problem. <laughs> oh, that'll be so awesome. And for anybody that's new here, all I have for insulation on the roof is I have two half inch layers of styrofoam, just regular sheet, cheap styrofoam. I think my entire roof for both pieces cost me like 40 bucks or 35 bucks, super freaking cheap. That's all I did to prep my van for winter this year. And that's the great part about slowly doing your build like I did is you get to add things as you go. You get to address the small problematic areas as they arise instead of doing a full complete build and realizing you got problems underneath it. By keeping it simple like I did, I went the first little bit of winter with just bare bones, no fancy walls or anything. Now I know what's gonna go on behind my walls this coming winter. And that really kind of it gives me a a sense of peace to know that I don't got weird stuff going on behind there because I've seen it without it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching today's video and I'm pretty pumped that getting ready for winter this year was as simple as an $8 freaking can of rubberized undercoating. So everybody fingers crossed that that freaking works for us this winter. Anyway guys, we're gonna go enjoy this. I'm gonna go show you something cool though before we leave. That hill up there is covered in writing. I'm gonna go up and get you guys some B-roll of that. But people have been writing names and stuff like that in rock. Yeah. Sounds like somebody's got a transmission problem. <laughs> it's an awesome spot in it. This one here is gonna be a hard one to drive away from today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Adios.